Summary of the Karen Jillian panel, Eternal Con 2016. We couldn't record during the panel according to the ushers, so here's a summary for those who missed it. There's no Doctor Who for, on TV for Karen Gillian growing up. It's pretty cool that 2005 Billy Piper was cast since she was a big pop star at the time. She wished she figured it would be interesting if it came out now with the advanced CGI and stuff. She thought the sets were a little shaky. And the advanced CGI too at the time. She said something about a scarf, which I didn't quite understand. An audience member said that Amy Pine was the best companion, which I agreed with, and a lot of the audience obviously did too. It's a pretty packed crowd compared to some of the emptier panels. An early question, spoilers alert, spoilers alert. If you did not watch the Amy Pond Doctor Who's, do not get into this part of, skip like a minute in. I'll put notifications later or something. So anyway, they discuss about how they wrote off Amy and Rory in the show. He thought it was the best ending, not too brutal, displacing time, happy with her husband in the show. She did miss being on the show, though, which she gets into so much in the panel. She missed Second Saturdays, where she would be in castles in Wales that were fridge like, drafty. She hanged out with her best friends ever on the show. Working on the show, which is cool, which she missed. In regards to the Chris Pratt in Guardians of the Galaxy, she thought she, he was a good leader on the set, very fun to get along with. It was very cool that they got to listen to the soundtrack while they were on set. Sci fi wise, when she was growing up, she watched Star Trek Voyager, Star Trek, including Voyager, X Files. Her mom is a big sci-fi fan. Go back to that later. She believes that she's very competitive to become an actress. To become an actress, you have to be competitive, and her working class background added to that. She voiced the Vlock that's monster on a tour, which is pretty cool. She joked around about never having a safety net if you were having big apart privilege, and how ne never having a plan B would be the best course of action. Don't listen to her, she was just joking. If she wanted to interact with any Marvel superhero character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it would want to be Spider-Man. She looked very forward to Spider-Man after seeing him in Civil War. So I mentioned, what if Amy was the first female Doctor? Which is weird, because I don't think that's how Doctor Who works. If not, who should be the first female Doctor? She mentioned Jessica Chastain, Obviously, being a red hair joke. Helena Bottom Carter was mentioned, and then she agreed with that. She was asking about if people were like female doctors or a U.S. doctor. People were a little bit, eh. And then she was like, what about U.S. Companion, which people agreed with? I can't reveal about the plot twist, any story about Guardians of the Galaxy until after the episode, uh, movie comes out. She thought it was cool that Jenna Coleman was with her at a con. Something about Sarah Jane Black also. She said something about Scarlett Johansson's lips. Maybe she was tired from the acting. I'm not going to discuss more about that. She wishes Doctor Who was not hard to watch, continuing without her. She wishes she was part of the franchise. She figures this eventually about time for a marathon vote watching the Doctor Who's after she wasn't part of the franchise anymore. Her sky out of sight wish, wishes he, she worked with Capaldi if she came back. Hard to say because Fad is leaving but you never know we'll see. Amy was Fat's big thing. Was her cousin actually the young Amy and she agreed. She never was she, did she actually never meet her cousin? She grew, her cousin who grew up in Ireland, now, it's, uh, it's a bit personal, so I won't get into that. She loved Friends growing up and loves Jennifer Aniston as an actress. She loves Tilda Swinton. Talks a lot about Scotland. 
lives in New York City, easy to get Scot to Scotland, and in addition, eat New York City food. How long does it take to put on the effects for Nebula? She loves practical effects. The effects for Nebula's makeup took five hours, including contacts, for the first Guardians movie. The first one is in London. For whatever reason, the second movie took place in the U.S. Well, it's filmed in the U.S. It took two and a half hours to find the makeup. She joked around being a U.S. thing. She had the debate about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe not, but I'm just writing my, reading my own notes and I'm guessing this is what happened. She had the debate whether Guardians of the Galaxy or Doctor Who was better. And Doctor Who won because she had fun with her two best friends. While Nebula was cool because of the makeup. She talked so much about Nebula. She loves playing with Nebula. She talked a little bit about Oculus. She worked on Guardians, which is wrapping up soon. And she worked on it the day before she went to Eternal Time. She worked... She was in Oculus. She loved... So, the question was... Did she get into horror films? And she loved The Exorcist when she... She watched it when she was like 10 or something. Way under the age group. She still has a personal relationship with... Bo Fat having her on him on speed dial. Matt lives. They have a very close relationship with the whole Doctor Who cast. Very, still hanging out and stuff. They joked about him the speed dial with Mo Fat, and he was, she was like, "Yes, totally," very enthusiastically. She promoted her film on Twitter, discussing the suicide rate of Scotland by having a little bit of Scottish sense of black humor. She joked around about it being the bad weather thing. Her favorite part about Doctor Who was running away from monsters. For Nebula, she thought it was fun transforming into this American Marilyn Monroe, Clint Eastwood offspring type character. And with her voice, she used the Nebula voice. She was very convincing, demonstrating that. The next step of her career involved wrapping up Guardians of the Galaxy 2. The writing and directing it is amazing. Someone asked about her being a selfie, and it's cool. Maybe something about friends, but I'm not sure. I don't recall too well, and I'm, I'm, my notes are not too clear because of iPhone autocorrect. Someone mentioned fires of Pompeii, Capaldi, Temnit, cool sort of Doctor Who precursor crossover, etc. She loves Matt's Doctor, although it was cool to hang out with Capaldi on, Pompe on the Pompeii episode before he was a doctor. Her favorite arc was the 11th hour because her cousin did a good job portraying her as a young Amy Pond. Getting anyone curious about the show. Very cool of her cousin. She never met Pearl Mackey but loves her though. Her mom approves. Why the scenes shaking they do the attack on the Stardust by not doing like an actual set moving but rather you know the Star Trek like attack the bridge thing. Finally, who would she play? Would she love to be in a reboot of Friends? Yes, playing Ross Geller.